Hey, welcome back to the episode of Final Village Garage, your Firebird Restoration Station. My name is John. These are the stars of the show, the Pontiacs, a couple Firebirds, and a GTO. And, of course, it's nice to see your happy, smiling face, because who else could be smiling on a beautiful day like this? Blue skies, toys to play with, and plenty of time. What I've got here behind me, we see a frame rail jig, trunk floor, some frame rails, tail panels, some tools, and whatever else I decided to throw in the driveway. We're going to work on getting that mounted up on that jig. Now, if you need one of those jigs, it's part number is GOF. U 1968 I think now actually I made that tool up myself and if you'd like to borrow it at any time if you're close to the Annapolis area you are free to borrow it because I'll probably use it three or four times in my life but I'm going to show you how simple or how much easier it makes in getting these frame rails positioned onto that trunk floor and stuffed up into the car that's the point of this video hope you like it of course any questions on the way please hit me up in the comments because I'd like to take care of those for you keep you going on your ride is the goal of this channel because and of course, also a little bit of a disclaimer, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Everyone has their ideas. Some of you have been properly trained or been through lots of educational courses to make you a whole lot smarter. This is all self-taught. So I'm only showing you how I do it and the results I get when I'm done. They may not work for you. Like I said many times, maybe it's a perfect, horrible, bad example, or maybe you get a laugh out of it. But well, yeah, let's get started. Let's get these frame rails mounted on that jig and get that trunk floor positioned properly. And tools this time around, happy, lucky, go lucky, DeWalt, the drill, the screwdriver guy, and then a bunch of screws. We plan on doing some screwing around. And that is a tape measure, my friends. Let me show you. And of course, Mr. Brick. He just, yeah, he's just my friend. And my favorite drink in the whole wide world, Orange Mountain Dew, and then our framing hammer, and then Stanley. He's going to give us a hand in getting things all squared up because that dude is properly calibrated. Uh, first thing off here, get the frame rails left and right. We've already modified those last go around for 1968. 1969 bird, they fall right in, not a whole lot of modifications whatsoever but if you didn't see the video how i made this up i made a jig for mounting these frame rails so that you can install the trunk floor and then put it up inside the car as one piece makes it a whole lot easier typically to get these things put in the car without the jig you're going to drop the plumb bob tape measure you're going to do all kinds of twisting and prodding and uh, it it's, takes a lot of time six to eight hours for me to finally be happy with the position of frame rails I'm hoping this simplifies this down to maybe a quarter or a third of that time. So that's what we're about to find out. This will be the first time I actually get to use this thing. So first step, we'll get these things mounted in there. All right, let's get this rolling. The frame rail, let's start with the driver's side. Now what I've already done, of course we've modified the end. That was last go around last video, but we've actually got the little U-nut or little nuts that actually hold the spring shackle. I went ahead and installed it. That's part of my jig. You get it mounted to the jig. That's going to be front alignment hole. I'm going to drop that on, line that up in the rear. I have a straddle here that actually holds the frame rail in place. So in case there's any deflection or motion in the frame rail you don't like, then that's going to hold everything in place while you put it together. Yeah, nice. Now, what I've done here in the back, the spring shackle, I made a little U-bolt style thing. It actually lines up with this. It'll clamp it down tight. Now that little radius here lines up with the pocket here, so it sits there. That's my dimension on the rear. Now here in the middle, it just has a little, I guess you say, saddle, but you can see it needs to be pulled over some. Well, that's the purpose of the jig, get things all lined up. Now here in the front, I have that hole. There's actually a hole drilled, I'll show you on this side, about a 3 8 hole. It's really, really snug to the threads of that bolt. That's a good alignment point, because that's some of the points they use for measuring from the factory spec book, which I will tell you, and I keep telling you, it's completely 100% garbage for the most part. I have yet to find a car that matches the spec book. So that was the purpose of making this jig. I built it off of a car that had great frame rails. So I know that's close to what GM, or at least we'll call it tolerable spec for everything to work. So I get the nut, I'm sorry, put the bolt in the front here, get the little strap put through here, and we'll do the same thing here to the passenger side. I got the front's all bolted. You can see the bolt sticking through there in the cage nut. Come back here to the back. I made these little straps that basically slide through the spring shackle hole and put the hardware on it. Lines up with those two ears there. Put the nuts on, snug those down, do the same to that side. I got all four points mounted, and then the other thing that I have for reference points are the little side saddles here about right above where the axle would come in. Now actually I weld this super close and I can't even get my finger nail between them so that side's good but check out the driver's side this is the reason the jig is going to probably save me a lot of grief i've got almost three eighths of an inch between my little spot here and the frame rail nothing little c clamp action can't fix we'll go ahead and clamp that into place then i can drop the floor pan on top and i know then that frame rail should be in the exact same spot my original one is simple as that snug that up flip that dude over
Ta da! Hey, for all of you who've been following this build from the very beginning, you knew how much I love these frame rails, gonna reuse these frame rails, and now you see brand new ones. You might be asking the question, why? Well, these ones end up being really rusty on the inside. Typical issue with the first gen F body cars, the insides rot out. I determined that both these frame rails had enough rust on the inside that I just didn't feel it was worth salvaging them or trying to rework them. I really figured it in this case, since the car is not a Conqueror's original numbers matching car, that the replacement frame rails was the best repair for this car. So these ones, I may not scrap them, but they're not going back on the car. I may save them for patch panels for another car later on. But anyway, besides all that, in case you were caught on to that, I put some new frame rails on it. Well, the answer why, there it is. But now the next thing is, where does the trunk floor go in relation to the frame rail? I can flip that dude over, but where does it fit from front to rear? The number I'm gonna give you is from this edge here. This is actually where the floor pan, I didn't cut it back. There's a brace on the inside, which looks like this component here. You can see the heavier gauge steel. That's the leading edge. That's gonna be my reference point. But from this reference point here, the leading edge of that brace or the trunk floor to the leading edge of the frame rail is 19 and a quarter inches. Don't believe me? That's what this is gonna come into hand. I'll show you how I use this to measure the weird radius and shape, because this actually is a tape measure. All right, well, here we go. This is how we're going to use this as a tape measure. Now, sometimes these metal ones, you try to get it on here, keep it tight into the radius, and hold it in place. It just doesn't really stay very level to the fit. So, uh, what we're going to do, make a nice clean end on, on the start here by folding it over, hopefully back onto itself, like so. It gives me a nice clean straight edge, so I got a nice solid reference point, and literally just kind of drag it along. Now this will stick to the radius, it's more flexible. And we'll do the same with this end, find where it needs to be folded over. Once we're happy with it, now I can peel this bad boy off, lay it on a flat surface. And as you can see here, start at that end, nice and square, and we come down to here, 19 and a quarter on the money. So if you want to know where to start, leading edge of those frame rails up, where the leading edge of the trunk floor goes, 19 and a quarter inches. Now that we know where this thing goes in relationship to those, um, get this thing flipped over, you might notice a little bit of a, a little cleanup here. What actually ended up happening is when I laid the tail panel test fitted to here. That side was hanging out about 3 sixteenths of an inch too far. So when I put the tail panel on, it was actually bulging it out. So instead of drilling all the spot welds out, I only did just the first four, took my 3 sixteenths of an inch out, slid it back into place, redid the welds, then test fitted the gas tank so it still fits. So I didn't actually undo the whole thing. I moved it, but that's the purpose of test fitting. There's always probably something wrong. So AMD, you let me down a little bit on that piece, but easy fix. Something to check before you throw it on. Make sure that it is nice and straight. And then once I get this thing flipped over, those should line up with the frame rail so that tail panel will sit nice and straight across the back. So let's get this thing flipped over and get our 19 and a quarter inches set. Yeah, I got the trunk floor flipped over in place. I put some tape on to highlight things so you can see it better, but you know, the uh, flexible tape measure called Stan Laylock, because Stan Lee was already used and copyrighted and a little bit jealous, so this one does curves better. So anyway, you see 19 and a quarter all the way there to the leading edge of the bent over metal, not this edge, because you actually had about eighth inch or so, but that edge here where it's been cut, we're matching 19 and a quarter. Did the same thing to that side, got it clamped into place. So the next thing is, I'm going to actually start putting some screws I'm starting here at the front and working my way back and keep pulling it down. And when it gets here back here to the rear, the alignment actually lines up really nice to the trunk pan. But the idea would be these holes here where the bumper mounts, the center line of the actual frame rail. The frame rail is about an inch and three quarters wide. So you find the center line about seven eighths of an inch coming straight up. It should be really close to the center of this. So within a sixteenth of an inch, I'll probably call it good. But you can see it, it's gonna need some clamping and persuading to get it to go. So next thing is start dropping some screws and working my way back.
Okay, all the plug wells from the bottom side they are completed. And if you get them out laid up pretty nice, they actually laid up completely flat and look very similar to the factory spot well. So no buffing required. The only thing I'll do is clean it up. I plan to sandblast that so I'll get anything off of it or any contamination. I don't weld real nice, but or paint real nice. So no uh, no need for buffing on these if you get them laid out pretty good. So next thing is lay this thing back flat and do the same thing from the top side. Not that you want to see me screwing around for her, but basically I put a screw each side of the frame around about an inch and a half to two inch for, uh, variation. So I just kind of make them look pretty. But I started at the front, I started pulling it down and kind of keep everything nice and tight and kind of keep them getting kind of a wave or a lump in it until it draws all the way back in the back. It's the same thing on both sides. So now what I'm going to come back and do is remove every other screw, then drill them out with my quarter inch drill bit, and then plug weld those. So that's going to take probably. Oh, a good hour or so of welding, drilling, and doing that. So, again, I'll get that all done. I'll get you the camera, get the camera back out here and show you what I've got completed. And then once that's all set up and ready to go, we'll get it on top of the floor jack and get it stabbed up into the car. I wanted to show you something here while drilling it out. I decided that maybe this is worth mentioning, but in certain areas where there's multiple layers of steel, hopefully the camera gets it, but you can see how deep that hole is drilled. we got the thin sheet metal for the trunk floor, there's an inner brace, and then there's actually the frame. So, we're almost a quarter inch deep or three sixteenths inch deep on these holes to finally get down to the base metal. So I you can really be able to do it that way. That's the thing. You got to get drilled through all the layers. You know, two layers, pretty simple. You punch through the thoroughly thin sheet, sheet metal on top, and then you hit the frame. At that point, that one's ready to well. That's kind of what those look like. So pretty shallow, really. Now at this point, you go zap and fill those things in. You get the weld to lay down flat. It looks just like a plug weld, but the parts you got to be careful to get all the layers tied together. You got to drill pretty deep and start welding in the bottom and then fill the thing up. So I wanted to show you that before I went ahead and burn all those in. Okay, 11 billion plug welds later, all laid out pretty decent. For the most part, I don't have to buff on any of them. They all pulled down pretty tight. I mean, they're almost completely level with the trunk floor, but I might buzz on them just a little bit. There's a few that poked up on it. So let's say 80% of them actually wouldn't have to do anything besides just prep them for paint. But the next thing is I'm gonna fight some gravity. This thing weighs a lot. I don't even know how much it weighs, but it weighs a lot. So I gotta find a way to wrestle it in the garage and then put it on the uh, almighty Pittsburgh jack there and see if we can't lift that thing up into place. Well, I got it wrestled into place. It's in the garage kind of seeing it there. And this is the point where it'd probably be a good thing to have a couple of your friends like my buddy Brian Minson out in Arizona and my buddy Louie in Pennsylvania. Um, those guys build firebirds too. Check out their channels if you get the opportunity put a link there in the description but since they weren't here i will use my good old reliable brick standard as you can see brick number one we're gonna call that one brian and brick number two louis since those guys are always volunteering to help want to give them an opportunity but at this point they're kind of just blockheads anyway i got enough height out of it i get the floor jack underneath it there we'll start getting it put up into position so we can fight some gravity with that instead of me crawling around by myself moving this thing around As you can tell, Brian and Louie, they're already done working. Now, this is an experimental situation. I've never used a floor jack or this jig ever in my entire life to install a floor pan. So again, this is a new technique that uh, I guess you can say I'm developing. It. You guys can see how good or bad it actually works. I got the front lifted up. I've got a bottle jack. I'm gonna try to sneak up into the front side so I have two ways of lifting it into place. But it appears that I can't too far. There we go. Right, now, let's see about putting that other bo bottle jack in the front. Underneath here, I went ahead and put a, a bottle jack to lift up the front of the jig so I can change that front elevation. But it's looking pretty good here because this is where it'll actually tie into the floor pan or the torque box. So pretty close there. So I think what I'll do now, just slide my floor jack towards the rear so I can get the back of it up. That way I can give my buddy Blockheads there a bit of a break. Towards the driver's side. 
Well, I'll get you a little closer up what I've got here. Lining up pretty good. Got the elevation close. Got to come up a little bit higher. Uh, line up back here to the back. And then, let's have a little more height of it. But it's actually working pretty decent. So I got to take the bottle jack up in the front. That'll close up that gap right there and bring up the back here. And it's actually not doing too bad. Get you a view here from the side, just in case you kind of want to know what that looks like. And looking in here, Thunderwell trunk floor. This has got to go up, but it's actually relatively level right now. So basically, just need to go straight up with the thing. And then let's take a peek what's here. Yep, and you can see the frame rail is starting to get close there too. So it's got to come forward just a little bit, but I think we can manage. Anytime you guys want to help Brian, it's absolutely, that'd be great, but it's not just hang out. Well, I survived. I didn't get crushed, hurt, or maimed, or I guess physically disabled or anything but it's in there it wasn't actually too bad now i'm gonna have to engineer maybe a better way to get the jack underneath i read you was only engineering this to hold the frame rails to assemble the floor and was the thinking of using it necessarily for lifting for installation 100 percent. so i may go back to the drawing board on that and these guys here i think they're almost stone they didn't do a whole lot um but on the inside of the car looks like a trunk floor again check this out that looks real tidy. That lines up pretty good. I just got to button up all the clamping the fender wells back to the car body and the frame and then get everything positioned into place. So it's going to take some tweaking and fine tuning and then getting it trued up to the car body. But we're probably all within an eighth of an inch of being done. Mm. Yep. Got it all in final position, clamped into place, ready to start driving some screws and continue the welding process. But I may actually call it quits today because it's like... 90 degrees out and pretty hot now here's what we've got going on here this is the center line of the tail panel this is the center line of the new trunk floor now if i actually get here straight spot on we're only about you know 16th of an inch of shift and i've tried to move it but just won't happen so i want to call that within a tolerable range of being good now i've actually done my normal technique here measure from the floor up to the frame rail jig and then from the floor which is my bubble level to the actual uh, trunk floor, and it's spot on, left and right. And even my points here, we originally measured to begin with, 36 and a half inches, um, still 100% spot on. So this thing is actually completely 100% level to the floor and the car. So I'm going to say we are in the right position. Next thing I'm going to do now is do a bunch of screwing again. Throw a bunch of screws in, about the same technique. Got a whole heck of a lot of clamps in here, but, uh, but same thing, come back through here put my screws through it and do my uh, spot welding in that and then inside the trunk where we previously patched up the fender wells man they pulled up nice tight and clean so that actually looks really good for a little patchwork but that's gonna work just fine and then the inside we reattach these little seat braces and we're good so basically hey, there you have it total time about four and a half hours get the trunk floor with frame rails perfectly level happy Ooh, we used the word perfect but uh within acceptable tolerances a little better than gm spec this thing's gonna look out, work out great. I love that frame rail jig. It definitely gave me a lot of confidence that I was spot on. Like I said before, I've got on my garage floor masking tape all over the place, plumb bobs, rechecking, make sure the body didn't move, dropping points, making sure I'm square. Didn't have to do any of that this time around. Basically, you saw what I did. Put those rails on, drop the trunk floor on, got it aligned, plug welded into place, and put it up underneath the car with no help from my buddies, Brian and Louie, but uh, Whatever. It'd be a whole lot cooler if those guys are here. You guys next time, you better come on out in here and help me because I'll tell you, it's like 90 degrees of insane heat. It's hot here in Indiana. I think I'm going to call it quits for today. But next thing around, just a bunch of plug welding. So I may do a lot of that behind the scenes and then 
not sure what part of the adventure we're going to do next. Maybe I'll start doing the uh, quarter panels because those are going to need to be done up also in the outer wheelhouses. So that's a video for another day, of course. I hope you found this information good or useful or helpful or slightly entertaining or like I typically say, how not to do it. And then, of course, if you would like to use the frame rail jig, it is free for you to use. Indianapolis area, just hit me up in the messages here. We'll coordinate something. You see how it goes. Well, I love the thing. Worked real nice, but grab a friend to help put that thing in there because it make it a whole lot easier. But anyway, I've said enough. I'm going to get the heck out of here, give me some daggum water, get some rest, and I'll get the camera back out next time we start on the next adventure, and uh, we'll see you then.